I wasn't going to leave you hanging for patch 8. So the final patch is out, that's what they said. It adds all kinds of stuff like new classes and photo mode, and it breaks all of our mods, does it not? Some of you are here because you opened up Steam, and as soon as you did, you noticed that Baldur's Gate 3 started automatically updating. So it's a little bit late for me to tell you, you might want to turn off automatic updates, because a few extra days is all you're going to need, and all these mods are going to be updated. Thank you so much, mod developers, you're awesome. What I'm going to do is teach you how to update your mods and show you how everything works. It's going to be a little bit more in depth than some of the ones that are just like do this and do that and, you know, like delete this folder and do that. I'm not going to just tell you, you know, to do a bunch of nonsense. I'm going to tell you how it works in the background. So that way, you know, as the mod updates roll out, you'll be able to like be like, oh, I know what's going on here. I can update this easily. And then after that, I'm going to show you my game plan as to how I update my game whenever there's a major patch that breaks a bunch of mods. Before we go any farther i'm going to take two seconds to tell you who i am i'm ward i'm working on uh, mostly music but i'm also working on a game on the side and then i do videos here and there so this is my latest album if you like super nintendo or dos music chiptunes nes stuff i think you might like it so i'll put all the links for this in the description if you like the music and you appreciate what i'm doing right here well go support the music it's good for everybody right especially if you like that kind of old school music First thing I want to talk about are the two mod managers, and this has been like this since patch number seven. I don't think a lot of people understand fully how it all works. So you've got the external mod manager, which is what I use, and I use it because it allows us to install basically any mod we want. Then we have the new mod manager, which is inside Baldur's Gate 3. And that mod manager doesn't have all the mods, but it has a lot of functionality and a lot of mods. They both are trying to do the exact same thing, so you need to pick which one you want to use. And I think if you're watching this video, you're going to be like me and you're going to use this one. So I'm going to show you how all these folders and files work. Click up here to open your mods folder. And this won't show up until after you have run Baldur's Gate 3 at least once. So you'll need to go through and just click on play over on Steam and run it at least once and then close it. And then you can reopen Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager and you'll be able to click on the shortcuts up here on the top. In here are all your mods. These are the ones I've downloaded in the past, but I want to show you some of the other folders. If we just go back one folder to Baldur's Gate 3, you'll see a folder called Player Profiles, and that's where all your save files and everything are. Uh, your, this is like your configs for your buttons and whatever, right there, configs, save games, all that. But inside this public folder, there's a thing called Mod Settings LSX. You don't need to edit this, and don't be scared because you don't have to touch this. I'm just going to show you what it is. Open this up. It's a list of all of our mods in the order that they load. And this is the order that you put them in inside your mod organizer or your mod manager. There's my basket equipment, basket equipment, improved UI, universal armor fixer. So all that stuff is there inside this folder. Now, here's the way this works. Whenever you're over here and you rearrange things in order, I want the better hotbar to be right there. And you can put everything in order. It's important to put them in the correct order. Um, most things don't matter that much, but sometimes you need to put something at the top, like uh, that needs to go there before better hotbar. After you're finished, just click on export. And see on the bottom of here, it says that like, hey, exported the load order to that file that we just talked about, modsettings.lsx. So it's rewritten that file. Now, when you're playing your game, Baldur's Gate 3, it doesn't look at this folder at all. It doesn't care. It looks at that file and then it looks at this folder. So just putting something in this folder does nothing. You have to click on the export button because it only looks at this file right here. Now, here's the thing. Once you're in your game, the mod manager inside the Baldur's Gate game looks at the exact same thing. It looks at the same information. So there's another note here. The first time you open the game after you've done the update, it's going to completely erase that mod uh, mod settings. The first time you open the game after this, it's going to completely erase that. So you got to open the game. It's going to tell you all your mods are missing. Close the game. Come back over here again. Click export again and then open Baldur's Gate 3 again and it'll work. All right, so let's get back to this and let's update our mods. This is going to be the, the boring part. So we've got to go through. I just put this over on the side. 
There we go, move them over. There, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start off at the top and we're just gonna check for updates. It's gonna be boring, but you can do it. So just open up a window here. This terrible new interface on <laughs> Nexus. Why did they do this? I don't know. And then we're just gonna search for improved UI. I've already done it once, so improved UI there. Click and just make sure that you're on the latest version. All right, I'm on the latest version already. There's patch eight slim. I'm gonna wait for the new version, but whatever. I've already done hotbar, but I don't think there's anything new for that. You can check for the universal armor fixer. Just see what we got. Universal armor, press enter and nothing. Armor fixer, nothing. This new search sucks. Just search for universal. All right, universal armor fixer. Not sure if we even need this anymore, but yeah, okay. So that's the newest version. So you just go through and do this for each one of your mods. And then your other mods, the ones that are installed in your data folder, you're gonna have to remember what those were and then search for them. I'm using native camera tweaks, uh, which requires the native mod enabler. And I'm using WASD, which is, I'm using improved UI and immersive UI. Just go in here and grab the latest version. This one does have a brand new version that just came out, as you can see on the 15th, 2025. So manual download. It says that you need these. Make sure you have both of these installed if you're downloading this mod. So I'm gonna open that zip file and then I need to navigate to the Baldur's Gate 3 folder. So the easiest way to do that is just to go back over here and do manage, browse local files, and then we're in Baldur's Gate 3. So just drag and drop bin into there. I've already done this, so I don't want to again, but that'll put the native camera tweaks in there. This just in, we just got an update for the WASD mod. As you can see, patch eight or newer. Now this one does not require the DLL file, which is cool. So just go ahead and download this. If you already have native mod loader installed, we'll go through this quickly. Slow download, grab it. There's a bin file right there. So open up your, your location, your Baldur's Gate 3 folder. There's the bin. Just take bin and drop it in here. And then make sure it's in there. You double click on bin, open up native mods, and you'll see WASD that DLL and the TOML file or the TOML. I'm not sure how people say it. All right, that's all there is to it. Now we can launch it and use WASD. All right, so it's working. Now on my other computer, I opened it up and I started pressing WASD and this happened and I was like, oh no, it's not working. Just note that uh, you need to press caps lock and that will allow you to toggle this. So there you go. Yep, WASD is working perfectly now. Okay, I feel I can actually play this again. If you're using Aether's Immersive UI, I love this mod. I like to come down and get just the loose files right here. I don't like the pack because I like to be able to control it myself. So if you're using this one, just note that um, it didn't used to use the mods folder. So here's how this works. Inside your data folder right here, you've got mods, localization, generalized. If there's something there that says like personal or whatever, you don't need it. it this, is, this used to be in a different folder, so yeah. Now, I'm gonna drag and drop this over here. Yeah, replace these files. Make sure it's up to date. Now, if you click through here, you'll see that we have a different file, an XAML file for each different thing. I want my player portraits to always be there. So I'm gonna delete the automatic, that's, that's the thing that makes it auto hide. If you want your dialogue to always be there, your hotbar to always be there to never disappear, then you can delete those. But this will uh, essentially allow you to have certain things disappear until you hover over them. And it makes the you know UI more immersive, gives you a bigger view of the scene. So these are all the mods that are the pack files that uh, are managed by the mod manager and all that stuff. And these things do have fragments that like are added to your save game. So if you remove some of these mods or change them, it may make your save games a little bit weird. For instance, if you're wearing some of this clothing here or whatever, and you remove the mod, it's going to break your game. It doesn't matter if you remove the hot bar or the improved UI, that's fine. You can remove that kind of stuff, but some of these things can break your game. Next up, if you see this little uh, yellow thing, that just means that you need to go up here and click on tools and then click on download and extract the script, the script extender. And that's gonna put that in your Baldur's Gate 3 folder, cool. All right, next up, let's talk about the other type of mods. And those are the ones you put directly into your game folder. If you right click on the Baldur's Gate 3 icon right here and click on open game folder, it'll bring you to your bin folder, which is you know, not exactly where we wanted to go, but whatever. There's your Baldur's Gate 3, we've got bin and data. So inside your bin folder, uh, I've created a folder in here. This is just, you know, here from stuff I've already put here. But these are my camera mods and my native mods. And there's a few other things that I've thrown in here. 
All right, see this here? This is really important. Don't touch it. It's going to tell you, oh, there's all these unresolved mod issues. Ignore this. So what's happening right now is this is trying to take over. It's trying to say like, I want to be in charge. We know what we're doing. We're in charge. Don't touch this. Do nothing here. Never, ever, ever touch this. Just leave it alone. If it says you need to check mark things, ignore it. If it tells you that thing, just don't. You are managing your own mods and we're going to be fine right now. You can play the game now. That's pretty much all there is to it. You can play. It works. So at this point, if there's a mod that's making things break, well, you're just going to have to wait. Now, if you want to start a new game, that's completely fine to do. I would probably wait on that new game until all the mods that I wanted to use over here that are pack files, all the mods that I'm using in Mod Manager, I'd probably wait until any of those are updated instead of like removing them and trying to add them later. So if there's a mod that you can't live without, and you, you know, I would say don't start the game until it gets an update. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. So the other thing is the mods that you throw into the folders over here, like these folders, the native mods, uh, and this data stuff, that's fine. That's probably not going to have any effect on your save files. It's This is just stuff you can throw in the folder. So if you want to mess with the UI or you want to, you know, add the, the camera tweaks, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Don't worry about your save files. That shouldn't have any effect on it whatsoever. That's some kind of external. That's more working on the engine of the game instead of your save file and your characters and everything. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this is not going to be too much of a, a deal for you. You know, I, I do kind of like the fact that this is the final update because that means that the mods can now take over. And I've seen some huge mods like there's some stuff out there that's looking really promising, like some, I guess, Neverwinter Nights style, huge extra campaigns and everything that people are working on. If I can get in touch with them, I might try to get some of my music, you know, and, and send it to them because uh, I do also work on some classical symphonic stuff. If you're watching this and you're working on a major mod, like a campaign that needs voice actors and all that kind of stuff, let me know and uh, maybe I could get you some music. I've got some fantasy stuff that might fit and I would love to contribute to something like this. Anyway, that's it. Hopefully your game will uh, be up and running soon. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. And uh, make sure you follow and subscribe. I don't post a lot here, but maybe I'll do that more as I work more and more on this game I'm working on and less and less on hardware that I keep saying I'm going to stop, but keep paying the bills, which is annoying. Maybe I should burn that bridge so I can't go back across. Anyway, I'll see you later. It fills this place. It fills my head with things I miss.